Good afternoon, everyone. My job is the best job in the world because I get to tell you that God loves you. Through Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, he has freed you from the guilt of sin and he has reconciled you to God. The past is no longer held against you and there is a glorious future that's prepared for all of us. This is my job to tell people that they're loved and that their guilt is removed. This is the heart of the gospel. This is the heart of our Christian message. And if you want to sum it up in one word, that word would be grace. Because of Christ, we are all recipients of God's unmerited favor. That's the good news. Unfortunately, I need to keep telling you this good news because it continually gets distorted by the way we look at things in this world of ours. It always has been, and this has been the case from the very beginning, ever since the church first started. One way in which the gospel of grace can be distorted can be called legalism. I like to call this grace but. Grace but, or legalism, says, yes, Christ has set us free from our sins. Because of grace, we are forgiven. But... But even though you've been forgiven, you must still obey the law. You must still live sinlessly. You must live morally upright lives. You are expected to toe the line, is the message legalism gives us. It's easy to slip into this mindset because this is the way the rest of the world operates. Everyone else says, in order to get something, you have to earn it. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There are consequences if you mess up. Grace is different from that message. Grace says, no, you are forgiven and you are loved and you are blessed simply because God wants to. It has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with God. Now, there are churches that fall into this legalistic mindset. And unfortunately, they'll then start setting up strict guidelines for their followers. In extreme cases, these sorts of Christians or churches will sit in judgment of one another and exclude people who fail to adhere to their code of conduct. Sometimes it can get so out of hand that you wonder, why did Christ die for us in the first place if you're only acceptable when you follow the law, the spirit, and the letter of it? This is a mindset, as I said, that existed in the early church, and you can read Paul's letter to the Galatians to hear how he addresses legalism. Now, there's another distortion to this message of grace. It's, the, in a sense, the opposite of legalism. The fancy word for it is antinomianism. That's a big mouthful. All it means is against the law, meaning there's no such thing as law. We don't want to follow the law. Antinomianism says because of grace, because of what Christ has done for us, no holds are barred. You, Christ has set us free from the guilt of sin, and so therefore there's no reason for us to regulate our lives at all. You can do whatever your little heart desires. It doesn't matter how sinful it is. It doesn't matter even if it hurts other people. It doesn't matter because through Christ there are no consequences. Everything is fair game. After all, Christ has died to set us free from guilt and punishment, so do whatever you want. There's no guilt or punishment awaiting you. In scripture, Paul addresses this problem, this antinomianism, for example, in his first letter to the Corinthians, because the church in Corinth was engaging in all sorts of crazy and wild living because they thought, well, Christ has set us free from our sin. It is as though the work of Christ has made no difference in this person's life at all. They are still caught up in their passions and their pride and their ego and their fears. And again, just like legalism, we can see plenty of antinomianism in the church today. These are churches where everything goes, except everyone exactly the way they are. No one has to change. Now, sometimes antinomianism arises in reaction to rabid legalism, but just like a pendulum, sometimes it can swing too far in the other direction. So if we have legalism on one side and antinomianism on the other side, that might make you feel as though grace is this narrow little catwalk that you have to walk between. 
We follow the rules, like legalism, but don't get too caught up in them, or else, well, follow the rules, unlike antinomianism, but don't get caught up in those rules, like legalism. Don't veer too much one way or the other. I'd like to suggest a different way of looking at grace, not as making sure you find the dead center between legalism and antinomianism, but to recognize that both of them are wrong-headed. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16 tells us, Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as free people. Yes, Christ has set us free. We are free from sin. We are free from the power of evil. And that includes being free from the evil inclinations that reside within us. Christ has set us free, and nothing can ever take away that freedom. Not even our own misguided or thoughtless actions and attitudes. It's good to understand what this freedom means. It means we're free to live in a new way. We're free to live as, well, free people. And as free people, our life will look different because it's no longer lived in bondage to evil. We no longer face guilt and condemnation, either from God or from human. Live as free people, 1 Peter says, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. In other words, don't misuse the freedom that we have in Christ. Don't twist it into something it was never meant to be. What Christ's freedom was never meant to be was a license to continue to live in your evil, sinful ways. After all, you've been set free from them. Why would you want to keep living in the way of bondage that has burdened you for so long? You're still a slave to evil if you're thinking, oh, great, grace means I can continue to live a sinful life. For you see, grace not only frees us from guilt, frees us from legalism, but it also transforms us into new people, into people who desire to do what is pleasing to God, the opposite of antinomianism. So live in the freedom that Christ has given us and let that freedom of Christ dwell richly within you permeate every bit of your fiber, every fiber of your being, and let it turn you into a new person. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the message of grace that all of us who call ourselves by your name have the privilege of sharing with others. Thank you, Lord, for freeing us from the power of evil and sin and death. And we pray, Lord, that your grace would continue to work in our lives, not only to forgive us for our sin, but to free us from the power of sin in our lives now so that our chief aim, our highest goal, our greatest desire is to live, to honor and glorify and serve you. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Bye-bye.